Bill Chapter 37, The Dry Bones, continues. Today we're going right into the dry bones. We're starting at verse 9. On Wednesday night past, we went verses 1 to 9. So we're starting at verse 9. The valley of the dry bone. We found out that the valley is America. We found out that the dry bones are our people, the so-called black man and woman of America. We found out that the valley of the dry bones is an allegory, meaning it's an allegory, a metaphor, and a simile, meaning that this scripture is not really talking about bones. Our people are hidden under the symbol of a bone. And you would need someone to come and teach you the spiritual understanding of what these bones are, who these bones are, and where the valley is. And once you understand those two points, you're ready for the understanding. We proved that the valley is America. And we've already proven that the, that, that the bones are the so-called black people of America. So you'll start with that in mind. And we'll read verse 9. Read. Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God Yahweh, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may like this. Praise Yahweh. This scripture says that we have been slain. How can we be slain and yet walking around? Before Yahweh raised me up, this scripture is not explained. In our minds, we would always think that when someone is slain, killed, they're in the cemetery. Never in our wildest dreams would we ever read this and think that this is talking about a people who were killed, and yet they live. Who ever heard of a dead people still living? That means we're looking at the walking dead. So when they made the movies, the zombies, it was always about us. Notice the zombies were always black natives. And the live people were always white. And the white man was always in charge and ruled over the zombies. The white master used the zombies to do his will. The old black native zombie in the movie didn't have a mind of his own. He couldn't look around and view the world on his own. He just looked straight ahead and marched to whoever was calling the tune. And it used to scare you to look at the movies of the zombies. And you would say, oh God, I hope I don't meet a zombie in the middle of the night 
I don't think I'll ever go to no jungle. I might see a jungle, I might see a zombie. <laughs> we never knew. This was a white man's allegory about our mental condition here in the hills of America. Yes, the white man killed us, all right. And to make us think it's physical death, he also killed a lot of us physically. He hung us on trees, burned us on stakes, and cooked us like hot dogs. Chopped off all parts of our bodies. He killed our men, women, and children and put fear of him in us. So we knew we had been killed by him. But we thought that was the only death. No, this scripture is letting us know that my people in America are suffering as if they are dry bones. Notice the word didn't say you were a cadaver or a dead body. But everything about you is gone. Your skin is gone. Your flesh is gone. The muscle, the sinews up on your body that holds your bone structure together is gone. And here in the valley, we're so bad off that our bones are scattered. Not only are they scattered, but they are described as having no meat left on them. They are dry bones and very dry. That's a pretty rough condition to be in when you die. You're not left with much to come back with. If you just died a temporary death where they couldn't find your heartbeat, then you would have to have all of your body there so that when your heart started back beating, you would have something to get up and walk with. But the Bible is describing us, the so-called black men in America, as being so pitifully dead that all that would make a body is gone. People came along and kicked our bones apart. Neck bone is no longer connected to the head bone, which is no longer connected to the collarbone, which is no longer connected to the backbone, which is no longer connected to the hip bone, which is no longer connected to the leg bone, which is no longer connected to the ankle bone and the foot is gone. Can't find the toe bone. Little bitty bone scattered all over the valley. Everybody walked through us, just kicked the bones all apart. How could we ever hope to get together? That means we have been so completely destroyed that there's no way to even find your skeleton. You weren't even buried. This book says, see, notice your bones were in the open valley here. So you were never, this proves you were never buried. You were dead, but never buried. Just laying out in the open valley. Dry bones. Very dry. Then Yahweh raised me up and told me to come and prophesy to you dry, dry bones. Can you imagine a man being given a job of walking around in a valley full of dry bones? And then ask the question, can these dry bones live? I had to say, oh Yahweh, only you know if these bones can live. I walked all around throughout America and I see that my people are totally corrupted. 
They are black and hate black. Their enemies are white and they love their enemies. I'm supposed to be able to do something with the people like that? I'm black like them, so they hate me. How can I help them when they hate black? They automatically hate me because they hate black. They've been brainwashed. These dry bones called black people in America have been brainwashed and programmed to love their enemy. I'm not their enemy. How are they going to love me? They're taught to hate the one that looks like them and love the one that does not look like them. They're taught to have a freak mind and believe in a freak. So when I come along as the son of Yahweh, they have a serious problem. Because they have been lied to and given a false image that has hung up in the, the dumb dog preacher's church. The lying dumb dog has a white image up in the front of you from the time you were born to the time you lay in a casket. A white image is up before you as the son of God. And then they tell you he is God. So now you got an image in your mind. Your mind in the subconscious mind says, I don't want to accept that. I don't want to believe the white man is God, but it's in the church. The preacher has never told me that's not God. The preacher never told me God is black. His son is black. The prophets are black. He never showed me that in the Bible. And Yahweh raised me up to come and teach you the opposite of what you've been taught. Somehow, I'm supposed to come and win a people, resurrect a people who are going to church all across America today with white images hanging up in their holes, white images hanging around their neck, white images hanging up in their church. I'm supposed to win against that? teaching the opposite they've never seen in their Bible that God and his son and his prophets are black. They've never seen it and here I come. Open up your Bible. Read. When you have 50 million black people in America who have a white image of the divine in their head, how in the world can one man who looks like you, born among you, have the nerve to come and stand up among you and say what you've been taught is a damn lie. It's a damn lie what you've been taught.
fact that I stood up by myself here in the hells of North America means that I must have met somebody. I had to have met somebody. Also means that after I met somebody, I must have had to believe the somebody I met. It means that I must have an absolute faith in the somebody I met to stand up against all of white America who have a white Jesus hanging up in that church. All of black America who has a white Jesus hanging up in that church. I've stood up in America against all of America saying you all are going to be destroyed and going to hell if you don't give up your white lie. You're going to be destroyed. You're going to have to bow down to the black Creator Yahweh and His Son Yahweh. I have an awful lot of faith in the somebody I met to stand up in the midst of the most powerful, wicked, evil, satanic government on earth and say your God never existed. Your Jesus and your Jehovah never have existed. They do not exist. Only Yahweh and his son exist. have so much faith in the somebody I met that I printed up by the hundreds of thousands of articles Jesus and Jehovah do not exist then I took it to the white house brown house red houses yellow house and your house Just in case you don't know who this somebody is that I met, his name is Yahweh. <laughs> Only the mighty God could come to a valley full of dry bones and speak and talk to those dry bones and expect them to live. Only the mighty God who has so much power in his word that he can say, let there be light. And there was light. Speak to the dry bones and they start coming together bone to bone. Even the whole world is going to have to admit that only the mighty God himself could come to a valley full of dry bones and make those bones come together bone by bone. Talk to the bones. Prophesy to the dry bones. And then they begin to come together bone by bone. Then come back. And in verse 9, prophesy to the four winds. That means that I have to have control of the four winds.
I read where he has control over the storm. I read where there was a storm on the sea and he was in a boat. And the boat was tossed. And the people riding in the boat said, I'm afraid it's going to sink. Huh? See, that's an allegory. That too is an allegory. Say that the son of Yahweh was in the boat, but he was asleep. The captain and the crew said, there's somebody on board. Is somebody on board this ship that has another God that we don't know about? Go wake that man up. We need to talk to him. Because if we don't talk to him, all of us are going to drown because the, the ocean is so mad that it's going to destroy the boat we're all on. We'll all drown. And they say he came up. Mm -hmm. And he looked at the tempest and the wind. And he spoke to the wind. Wind? Peace. Be still. And it was so. Let's go to Matthew 8, 23. <laughs> Read. And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord Yahweh, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, why are ye skillful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? You will see me do this soon. You'll see me do it. Once you understand the allegory, you'll see me do it. See, this is an allegory, metaphor, and simile. You can't understand this without me. How many would like to understand this? See, this is talking, this great tempest is a great wind 
that we're talking about in Ezekiel 37, 9. I'm going to speak to four winds in Ezekiel 37, 9. I spoke to a wind over here in, 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 in Matthew 8, 23 through 27. You want to understand the mystery? I know you're wide awake. You can all stand up and teach me this. As soon as I tell you, then some will say, I knew it. Don't you lie, you don't know it. The ship is America. The ship is America. And a great storm is about to raise itself in America. It's so wonderful when I can tell you what's coming. John 16, 13. See, I'm showing you things to come. There's a great storm coming in America. The dollar is about to fall and change. The banks, 60 banks and more a year are closing down. More and more businesses are being closed all across America. Unemployment is on the rise. The economy is on the down. Reagan said he's cutting everything but Social Security and the Pentagon. And he said, after I cut it, you ain't seen nothing yet. And on top of that, Yahweh is killing the crops. That's causing a famine in the land that America isn't telling you about. It looks like any time now, America could be hungry. And naturally, the first ones to get hungry is the so-called black man of America, the dry bone. We're in this ship and the storm is coming and white people are preparing through survival games and KKK and buying weapons and tanks to kill you in the street when you get ready to riot for food. You don't have to riot for food, you could come to Yahweh. But I'm warning you all across America, you don't have to riot for food. You can come to Yahweh. I'm able to save you out of this hell that you're in. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. The white man is prepared for the storm of race riots. And we have a lot of our people in America who are ready to oblige them in a race riot. That's a mighty storm. And when that kind of storm arises, there's no so-called false black leader that can speak to my people and say, I rebuke you, come now. I'm going to be the only one that will be able to speak nationwide to my people and they will hear my voice. I'll be the only one. Say so that when we went on board the slip ship, I went asleep. That means that I'm so confident in Yahweh's protection that I'm not worried about the storm because I have power over that. Oh, but my disciples and those who are awake to the conditions that are coming up on America will come and say, oh, Abba, oh, Yahweh, wake up. We are fixing to be killed. The enemy is everywhere. They're all around shooting in our neighborhood. Oh, help us. And I'll wake up and say, oh, ye of little faith. Why are you fearful, my little flock? I have power over the situation 
Don't worry. Praise our way. Then we can go back to Ezekiel 37. We can understand the nature of some of this wind. It'll be coming from the four corners of America. Not only that, there's a worldwide scene of wars coming from the four corners of the earth. And I'm getting ready to call upon the nations of the earth to execute judgment in the earth and upon America where we live. I'm getting ready and they're gonna hear me. The nations of the earth are gonna hear what Yahweh has to say. They're waiting on Yahweh's command and for me to let them know that yes, the righteous has been resurrected. The righteous has been redeemed. The righteous has been reformed. I have spoken to my people across America and let them know who Yahweh and they are. Now come on and walk. Execute righteous judgment on them. Here in Ezekiel 37 9, it says, Son of man, Yahweh said to me, Prophesy to the wind. Praise Yahweh. Preach to the wind. Wind also means war in the Bible. And now you're hearing about war and rumor of war every day. Nicaragua, El Salvador, Cuba. America wants to go to war. Reagan wants to fight somebody. Thus saith Yahweh, come upon these dry bones from four directions at once. See this, this is an awful calamity coming for. Can you imagine what it's like for four winds to meet each other in the middle? Can you imagine the power exerted upon something in the middle of that. I've seen wind blow you in one direction down. I've seen wind blowing in one direction blow buildings down. Overturn tractor trailers, trains. You have too. That's just blowing in one direction. Uproot trees. You can't even move the tree. It takes huge tractors to move the tree. The wind blowing in just one direction. Uproot the tree and move it on down the road. <laughs> We're talking about the power of Yahweh just moving with the wind in one direction. Can you imagine standing in the middle of winds coming from four directions? That means some mighty pressure is going to be exerted upon you, my people. Notice this isn't toward the white man, this is toward you. You are standing in the middle of the valley. And after I hook your bones all up together, 
then I'm calling up on the four winds to come up on you at once from four directions at the same time. Pressure unimaginable. See, it's going to take that kind of pressure to get my people to wake up and to give up worshiping the white man as God. And notice who the wind is to come to and deal with. Breathe upon these black people that have been slain. Why? So that they may live. What kind of death are you suffering from? Mental death. What, what is it that all nations on earth have that you don't have, my people? The knowledge of your language, knowledge of your history, knowledge of your culture, knowledge of your God, knowledge of the sun, knowledge of your last name, knowledge of your land. All of this you are dead to. Knowledge of the other nations of the earth, their beginnings, their ending. You're dead to the knowledge of your beginning and you're dead to the knowledge that you have no end except you who reject Yahweh. You're the only ones who have an end. Your end is forever and it's death, you who reject Yahweh. But you are dead to this knowledge. You're dead to the knowledge of the Bible. You can read the Bible but you can't understand it. You pick it up and look at it, and it's just like a book from another planet. <laughs> you are unable to take this book and better your life without me. And after meeting me, you have to struggle within yourself. Even after you meet me, you have to struggle within yourself. To do right, to get up, to work without being pushed. It's a struggle within yourself. You've been dead so long, You've been, your bones have been dry so long. But I'm not going to leave you alone. Yahweh. No, I'm going to do everything Yahweh says here until you live. Until you come alive. I'm going to continue. Praise Yahweh. In verse 9, I'm to prophesy unto the wind. Verse 5 tells you why. Again, read verse 5. Thus said the Lord God Yahweh unto these bones, Behold, 
I will call breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. You shall live. I hope you live. Shall live. Shall live. Shall live. There's no doubt about you living. No doubt at all. Now, it's in my power to do this. And we can look at the work of Yahweh and see that Yahweh has the power to bring this about. He gives us physical examples that he's able to bring this about. Yahweh lets us look at a desert and we can watch this desert for a hundred years, two hundred years, nothing grows on it. And all Yahweh has to do is send the rain over the desert and it will sprout to life instantly, right away. The most beautiful greenery you've ever seen in your life. Thank you for listening to our international broadcast. And now, some announcements by Yahweh, our Messiah. I would like to once again thank you for listening. It is time for us to wake up nationwide. It is time for our people to come to Yahweh. Join Yahweh. Join the kingdom of Yahweh. For the end of this white man's world is at our very door. Come to Yahweh while you still have a chance. Run to Yahweh. Fly to Yahweh. Second Timothy 2.15 teaches us to study, to show ourselves approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I would invite you to study and do your research. Some of the books that you need are the dictionaries, encyclopedias, and go to your library. Research the word Yahweh. I highly recommend the following books for you to read and study and do research in, and they are The Original Black Bible, The Way It Was Before the White Man Changed It, You Are Not a Nigger Book, Yahweh God of Gods, Let My People Go, The Hebrew Israelite Divine Dietary Law Book, 100 Years of Lynching, and Our Many Pieces of Free Literature and Free Catalogs. Also, I would like to encourage you to listen daily to the cassette tapes, lesson number one. And when lesson number two becomes available, get it also. Also, you should be playing the music of Yahweh in your homes and invite your friends to play the music of Yahweh in their homes, such as we have the world's best-selling album on cassette tape now, uh, titled Let My People Go by Gideon, and also spread the news by your say, Two great best-selling tapes. You will enjoy those musical tapes highly. Also, I would like to invite all of you listening to this broadcast to help wake our people up. Spread the news about Yahweh. Testify about Yahweh and His Son, Yahweh our Messiah. Also, go out and make 1,000 friends for Yahweh. Every day, make friends for Yahweh among our people. Also, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, I would like to invite you to write to me. Write to me whenever you have a problem or a question or more information about Yahweh. Whatever the elder is not answering for you locally, then feel free to write me here at headquarters in Miami, 2766 Northwest 62nd Street, Miami, Florida, zip code 33147. We want you to know that we are now a worldwide movement. People all over the world, in the Caribbean islands, in the tip, northern tip of South America, in Africa, Hawaii, the Philippines, Korea, they're all receiving our literature and reading about Yahweh and accepting Yahweh as God. 
In America, we have over five million people who are reading our free literature, our free newsletter, our free newspaper, all over America. Can you imagine five million so-called black people in America are reading about Yahweh every month? That makes Yahweh the most powerful voice among our people here in the hills of North America. So join Yahweh today. Join the greatest and fastest moving organization helping our people here in the land of North America. Lastly, I would like to invite you to send your tithes, your donations, and your offerings here to headquarters. Send them directly to headquarters here in Miami, 2766 Northwest 62nd Street, zip code 33147. Send all your tithes, offerings, and donations to headquarters so that I will know